Is your wife Indian too? She's Indian. That was right. important to me. I that was important to your mother. You know these comics. <laughs> it was important to me. You know these comics who like hate white people and then they yeah. Come? yeah. I didn't want to be that. You know. <laughs> if I'm a hate white women, I'm a hate white women. Not to say there's not gorgeous white girls, but I can't be yeah. on white women and then having sex with them. That's a loser. Yeah. Shit. Right. That's what black dudes do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And some woke brown comics. The, all, right. the more woke you are, the more you want to yeah. f- white people. This is <laughs> male, female, crosses genders. I always, I just didn't want to be hypocritical at all. Right. And I always thought it was, I want to pass my culture on to my kids. And the best way of doing that is right. they don't have an alternative. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Listen to me right now. Uh, I talk about it all the time. People get sick of me. Guys, it's time to get the best t shirt. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing the underwear. I'm usually full true classics. The t-shirt, I'm telling you right now, not everybody has a Brad Pitt fight club body. Most of us are just regular dudes. But here's the thing with this. I don't know why they figured it out and other people haven't. It's the best t-shirt ever made. It's tight up top. And it has a little loose down the bottom. So when you raise your hand up or you go to pick something up or you're in the Walmart or wherever, your stomach and your side fat doesn't hang out and it's not sticking to you. See, oh, I remember my old T-shirts. You could see my belly button hernia through them. It was disgusting. True Classics has figured it out. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first. Tighter in the arms and chest, but with the perfect amount of room in your midsection. The best part is that True Classics sells their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with a two or three pack of t-shirts today and feel the difference for yourself. I'm tell- I wear them all the time. They have uh, active wear. I have the hoodies, the sweatpants, the workout gear. I'm t- a lot of times I'm in full True Classics head to toe. If they made a sneaker, I'd wear it. If they made socks, I'd wear it. That's the only thing. No matter what your schedule You want to feel and look your best. This is what you got to do. True Classics even has a 100% perfect fit guarantee. Did you hear what I said? 100% perfect fit guarantee and super easy to return. Okay, so you got nothing to lose. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash dude, D-U-D-E, and save up to 25% off your first order. Please support the show and tell them we sent you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classics. Trueclassics.com slash dude. Yeah, baby, we're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude, live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKW. I started the social media podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKW Dude Podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school, back in the day, where it all started. Before them all. YKW. YKW. This podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up. You're ruining this. Where's the bandana, man? I'm sorry. It's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's the podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. What's up, everybody? It's Robert Kelly. We're back for another You Know What, Dude podcast. We got a great episode today, so make sure you do me a favor right now. A lot of people are watching this, but you're not subscribing. So if you're first time here and you're not subscribed, hit the stupid button. It's nothing. It costs you nothing except a click of your mouse or your dumb finger. And make sure you like, comment, and do all that stuff. Go to my social media. I got nobody on Instagram. So go follow me on there, you son of a bitch. And if you really want to watch the show live, you want to support the show, and you want to be able to make it so I can pay these autistic kids that work for me so they can get soup and whatever weird shit they eat, go to patreon.com slash Robert Kelly and become a member up there. Uh, and become a real ass dude. So we got this great episode today. I'm excited you're on, uh, Max. Who do we got? We got uh, Akash Singh. Woo! I mean, he has the <laughs> personality of a f- dead dirty sponge. <laughs> I mean, what the f- dead? I apologize. It's all good, dude. I apologize. It's all good. Are you a comedian? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's rough for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> just no command of the room yet. You know what I mean? I mean, he's are you been, green? He's, he's new. Been, he no, no, 
no, no, no. He's had a lot of time to get this shit down, <laughs> and he still has it. I mean, he <laughs> he really <laughs> blows. Can you try it again? Not for me. I don't. My ego doesn't need it, but I'm worried about you as a comedian owning a room. That's true. Can you just try it again? Give him a shot. Ready? Who do we get on, Max? We got comedian Akash Singh. That was a little bit better. I mean, not little, much. Not much. It was a little bit better. Not much. Yeah. I want to say that was better, and then I stopped myself. You want to hear worse? Yeah. Joe, Joe, <laughs> who do we got on, Joe? We got Akash Singh on the show. <laughs> that's a radio DJ. I mean, that just sucked. <laughs> that was FM radio, dude. Let's try with Danny. Who do we got on today? We have from Flagrant uh, 2 Podcast. Forget it. I- it's gone. That's Wheel of Fortune. I mean, it sucked. They, yeah. I got nobody. I got. Uh, I wish girls liked me. They really hate me. Uh, um, we got what? You're adorable. Why would they hate you? You're um, no. hotter and hotter every day. Oh, look, dude, you've been giving me compliments since we you walked look great, in. Great, man. I, I, I love it. It's good Thanks, to see. buddy. That, <laughs> I remember. I remember you a couple of years ago, big boy. Now, you know what I mean. No well, here's thing, the thing: is I remember when I went on your show uh, with Schultzy, and I just gotten the surgery. But my special was, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't watch it. I can't. <laughs> too fat? Buddy, I hate it. I mean, I am a tub of shit on Killbox. Yeah, but it's a great special. Yeah, it was great. It's on Killbox right now. I mean, on punchup.live if you want to go watch it for yeah. nothing. Oh, nice. Uh, punch Up. Yeah, I love Punch Up. Okay. You know about Punch Up? No. Punch Up's great. Yeah. Oh, it's a great, great new platform out there. No, uh, you put it up there. You don't have to edit it. It's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No censoring. That's not the word. What's the other word? I think that's the word. It is the word, but it's not the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it's great. <clears throat> All my stuff's up there. It's fantastic. Um, anywho, so dude, you got a new special out. Yes. Now, you're a part of this thing. You guys created this thing over there with Chelsea. Yeah. That I mean. It's huge, dude. Oh, thank you, man. I mean, I I didn't know how huge it was until I went to the studio to do the show. Yeah, a, and you have you have a, a, a like a legitimate. You own the floor. It's a full space. Yeah, it's a full space. Hours, but yeah. then you guys all rolled in, like dead with your e bikes. <laughs> I don't have an e-bike. That's you don't funny. have one? No, 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 no. I mean, dude, everybody rolled in on e-bikes. I was like, what the f*** is this? Yeah, I'm not I, f- I felt like I was in the future. <laughs> like you guys are coming up with a new app yeah, no, or something. I, I'm lifting, dude. I'm lifting an Uber. You're Uber? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You don't have an e-bike? Why not? No, I'm too. I'm risk averse in life. My, financially, I have no risk aversion. Career-wise, let's take whatever risk. Let's put whatever money in. But when it comes to the safety, I'm weirdly like, I don't like roller coasters. I don't like uh, motorcycles. I've never. Dude. I'm just like, no, nah, I'm not. I'm trying to live. Dude, I'm the same way. Like, people want to get me to do stupid shit. And I'm like, why? Yeah. I'm not. That, yeah, I'm, I'm too old. If I. You understand? I got to go on the road. If I hurt something, if I get a bad knee, I'm. Dead. Yeah. How are you going to feed your family? Yeah, I'm not going to go skiing. Yeah. No, never. Ari's like, I'm going skiing. It's like, dude, you're going to hit fun. a tree. Have fun. Yeah, I don't. Are you going to. Oh, you're going to do mushrooms and go down a mountain. That doesn't sound right. That does not. The mushrooms part I'm into. <laughs> you love how you do, you do drugs? I've done. I didn't smoke weed. I didn't do anything until I was like 38. Rogan got me to smoke weed, <laughs> as he will. And then I did shrooms right before I filmed the special. I was hoping to have one of them dead. breakthroughs. I didn't, but it was so fun. <laughs> it was so fun, dude. It's what, the best. What, what breakthrough? Are you going to think it becomes Louis dude, C.K.? I don't know. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, man, life is weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But is he, you know, Israel Adesanya, the fighter? Yeah. He lost a fight, and then yeah. he said he did shrooms twice before the rematch, and he won. And he was like, it was really helpful for me to, like, get mental clarity. And I was like, well, if Izzy can do it, I can do it. I'm not a fucking the, fighter. <laughs> that's not the way it works. Yeah, I didn't work. No, <laughs> I had a fun time though. I had a blast. <coughs> what happens on mushrooms, dude? You disassociate. I don't know. I didn't do a crazy dose. I did a gram, but I spaced it out over like three hours. Yeah. So it was I. But you're just you put on some headphones. You're just having a f- blast, dude. But what happened? Like where where do you go? Does the, the I didn't go like- any crazy. I, now I want to do like four grams alone and just f- live and just you know have it out with God <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but uh, your God or my God. Well, uh, it's all one God. Is it? Yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Are you religious? I am religious, yeah. Okay, who, who, what's your I'm religion? Hindu. All right, so you're Hindu. But what we believe is like there's many different ways to get up to a mountain. Whatever side you climb up from doesn't really matter. It's just about getting to the top of the mountain. So you did do mushrooms. Yeah, That was yeah. pretty good. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, yeah, that? That's pre-shroom stuff. Wow, that was really that's good. Hinduism. Dude, we're great. What Hinduism a great. great answer. There's Hinduism. many different ways to get up the mountain. That wasn't. Yeah. That was from the shroom. Dude, I heard a better one, which was if, you're, if you have a blindfold on and you're grabbing an elephant, yeah. you're going to say, well, if you're holding... 
the the leg, you're gonna say, well, this is what this this thing feels like. This elephant feels like this. It's big. It's meaty. It's thick. Somebody grabs onto the trunk. They're gonna be like, no, that's not what an elephant is. An elephant is just like this long, skinny thing. That's so. None of us know what God is. It's just in, incomprehensible thing that we're looking at kind of blindly. Yeah. We're all just grabbing different parts of the elephant. You could do that with like big black cock porn too. <laughs> no, I know what that is. <laughs> I, I know what I'm grabbing onto. <laughs> you just don't know. It could be the balls. It could be the shit. No, you know. It's, pretty, it's all you pretty know. clear. It's all delineated. You know what I mean? Uh, what? I don't even know what that means. Distinct. Different. Dude, you're very smart. No. No, shut your face. No, I'm not. Because you were studying no. to be... A doctor. But I, okay. if I'm here, I didn't succeed. But you could have. Mm. You could have. This is a misconception I like to clear up. If there's any Indian kids watching, which I know there aren't, uh, but if there's any Indian kids watching, don't yeah. think I, I could have been a doctor and turned down med school. I didn't get in. I had a year to think about things, tried comedy. So if you, I got in, I'd have just been a miserable doctor. Why, Not a good is, why is it that Indian, like Indian dudes, like engineer or doctor, yeah. very smart, like is schooling? Uh, so it's all we have. And I don't mean that to say, I mean, that's our parents never tell us you can be anything you want to be. They didn't, they're like, we came here and you, what we came here for is for you to take care of your kids the way we hope to take care of you. The safest fields to do that are engineering and medicine right? and maybe law. Yeah, Those are the things I'd like you to focus on. Focus on your studies. You're not going to be a pro athlete. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you focus on this. Are there any pro athletes? It is true about Indians. There's never, a, I say this, there's never a fully in shape Indian dude. It's tough. Even even your like superheroes like the RRR, yeah, like yeah. the the action stars, yeah. which I love Indian action movies, they're just so over the top. Oh, there's a new one you got to watch called Animal. Oh, really? I mean, it's like a mob movie kind of, but right. it's so fucking good. And there's one scene that you'll love. It's, I mean, thousands of people get murdered by one guy. It's it's, it's so, but the guys are never fully in shape, like Jean Claude Van Damme or like Schwarzenegger. You know, Stallone. I'm going to show you my cousin-in-law. It's happening. Here's just to say it's happening. This is my wife's <laughs> Who's husband. that? Uh, he was the... Uh, he was oh, Simbular, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but look, Simbular. yeah, but he's not in shape. <laughs> no, no, there's... Uh, let me show you my cousin. This doesn't even make fucking sense. What's his name? name? Vegas. Vegas? Yeah. Um, V-E-G-A-A-S -E dot 23. I mean, wow. just take any picture you want. This guy's a... Obviously, he's not my genetics. My oh, wife's in good dude. Shape. I mean, it's fucking crazy. This, can I just say idea. something? This is the only in shape Indian guy I've ever seen it's in my nuts. life. I mean, this it's guy is more, nuts. It's getting a little more money. We have a little more access to nutrition, et cetera. Wow. But yeah, this is starting to happen. Now. I mean, he's ridiculous. Crazy, right? He's got, but he, you know, he's got the six pack. He got it all. He's got it all. And he's got the uh, bulge. Nice bulge. No, I wasn't going to say that. I, I mean, okay. Well, <laughs> he's your cousin. I don't know how it goes over there. He's got Wife's the. Cousin. What? I can still fuck him. What? That's fucking. My wife is okay with You it. said it. I didn't. Guy. I would fuck him. Yeah. Um, he's got the, uh, the, the thing on top. What's that called? Oh, the turban. The, the turban. Yeah, I didn't want to say it. Yeah. I didn't want to get canceled. Yeah, yeah. Now, what is, the tur what is the turban? What is that? So I think the idea, my wife is sick. I'm Hindu. But my wife. Uh, Sikh. Sikh, yeah. Um, and it's essentially, I think the idea of sick healing is three things that they wanted. They wanted, uh, no more casteism. Casteism had kind of taken a lot of hold in Hinduism. Yeah. So they wanted to eliminate that. There was a lot of gender inequality they wanted to eliminate and they wanted to, uh, write something in a language, a religious text that everybody could read, not just the rich people, the high caste people. Right. And also the, the turban was a crown back Cr oh, no, really? back then. So they were like, every man gets to wear this. Because well, you're it's a like king. An equality thing. Yeah, we're right. all kings. Yeah, this so, guy's not. Look at him. Dude. Look at the one on the right. The way over to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch. He won't go to the right. I said all to the right. I went I mean, to the right. He look. He goes to the middle. Now he goes to the right. I. Go. Wow, man. <laughs> Is that the only in shape Indian guy on earth? <laughs> dude, there's a couple out there, but this one. Wow. This one might be number one. He's this guy nuts. Is crazy. I'm gonna say this. Not much packing. <laughs> Come on, dude. Don't hate on the bulge. It's a solid bulge. <laughs> That's not a solid bulge. I mean, but he probably tucked the balls. That's just you know, hang. Time. I don't know, dude. He's That's got, straight hang time. He's got to he's got to get a little fluff in there or something. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't take that photo unless I fluffed it up a little bit. I can't believe you clicked on it. I mean, dude, I'm looking right at it. It's white. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bullseye right God, there. I've, look, he's probably a grower too, not a shower. You know, yeah, you me too. About. I'm a grower, not a shower. Who yeah. am I kidding? <laughs> you you got to push a lot of chub foot. Fat back to get mine. Hey, you know what I quote you on all the time is I'm on, what do you say? I'm on my fifth fat or my fourth fat? Sixth fat. Sixth fat. There yeah. it is. I always quote people on that. Oh, sixth fat? I always tell people that, yeah. Um, let me ask you a question about your religion here too, right? Yeah. 
I, I find it interesting, but like uh, an Indian wedding, I, mm. I, am, I don't want to ever become friends with an Indian fully because mm. I don't want you to invite me to your wedding. Yeah. Because it's like a three day event. Fun. It, it looks fun. It's so fun. Dude. It is fun, but it's like three days, right? Seven, how many days? In India, I've heard seven. I haven't been to a full Indian uh, seven day thing. I've never been to that. In America, typically two days. It's two. Two days is nothing. It's light work. I we have hate, Friday and a Saturday, and it's done three events. I oh. don't. I hate weddings. I hate the the whole thing. Why would you hate a wedding? Because it's first of all, I'll tell you why. It's like you know they pretend like they're the motherfuckers for the day. Like they she's are. a she's a princess. She's yeah. not. She blew. She was at a fucking. They paid all the money for you to be there. So they, no, like, you didn't. Because like, you got to give them money back. You got to you you give them an envelope. Let me tell you something. A wedding is a net loss. It's it a net sure. loss. It's a I, massive net loss. I got to fucking lose a day, a weekend. No, for the for us. For well, the people throwing okay, the wedding. For you. I lost money on my but wedding. But I lost sure. money too. Because I got to go there. I got to give you money, right? For your day. So I'm paying for my food. Basically, I'm yeah, paying yeah, yeah, yeah. to go to your wedding, right? I got to give you at least what I what you fed me, right? Yeah, wow. Well. Liquor's free. Right? I don't if drink. you've got any class. I don't though. drink. Oh, yeah, you're sober, right? I don't, yeah, I don't drink. Okay. So now I'm going to a wedding all day, and it's exhausting, and and then you got to go to a church. What's you know the, exhausting about the wedding? I mean, the fucking getting dressed, getting up, going there. Then you got to go to the, the church. thing you've ever said. And, well, know, you know <laughs> you what? You get exhausted getting something? dressed? I haven't been to a wedding skinny. You might have a <laughs> yo, thing. Yo, if you're like buttoning your shirt, like, oh, I'm dude, so tired. I'm worn dude, out. Every wedding, I have to run to men's warehouse and get it because I was always a different fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Either I was, either I lost weight and the shirt doesn't fit, or I gained weight and the shirt I thought fit didn't. But this one is this one took this weight loss took. I mean, this one took. Yeah. I mean, I should probably go to a wedding. Maybe I like it again, dude. You would love it. I've only, wedding is so fun. Yeah, but then you look like like a troll shit on you because they throw the the stuff at you. No, that's right? holy. That was that already happened. It's a holiday. Oh, that happened. Indian weddings were. Just partying, we're getting drunk, we're having fun. Okay, That's so it. if you eating. get married, you're gonna invite me. I did get married. Oh, you're I, done. If I'd known you, I would have invited you. Oh, that's I didn't stinks. know you. I'm not, I'm not, oh. I'm not past you. How long you been married? Um, I've been married two and a half years. Oh, congratulations. Hey, thanks. Are you in love? I uh, yeah, I'm so yeah, in love. you're it's so in love. Yeah, best. You're gonna have kids. I want to. I love kids. I but not now. Better. I'm ready. If it Are happens, it happens. Really? Yeah, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on my wife, so we're not like doing, being super... Is whatever. your wife Indian too? She's Indian. That was right. important to me. I that was important to your mother. You know these comics? <laughs> it was important to me. You know these comics who like hate white people and then they fuck them? Yeah. I didn't want to be that. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm a hate white women, I'm a hate white women. Not to say there's not gorgeous white girls, but I can't be shitting on white women and then having sex with them. That's loser shit. Right. That's what black dudes do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And some woke brown comics. The, all, right. the more woke you are, the more you want to fuck white people. This is <laughs> male, female, crosses genders. I always, I just didn't want to be hypocritical at all. Right. And I always thought it was, I want to pass my culture on to my kids, and the best way of doing that is right. they don't have an alternative. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you go now? Do you go to church? No, I don't. I go to the temple if I go, and I, I don't go enough. My how uh, long is church? The Munder Hindu um, temple. It's a Munder. Yeah, M A N D. Okay, and yeah, you just go. It's pretty casual, laid back for Hindus, at least in North India where I'm from. Yeah, my wife, they call it the Gurdwara, which is the Sikh temple, and yeah. that's a much more structured thing. She wants to go every week. I don't necessarily. I'm traveling a lot. Right, but we went this Sunday. We'll go next Sunday. You go. They feed you at the end. How long? I like that. Good. All I you like need. that. You're gonna take your shoes off. Uh, yeah, shoes off. You out in the front. No, inside. inside. There's a men's area and a women's area. I and like in that. In the temple, typically. So you no. sit on either side? Yeah. Men have to sit together? Yeah, we're just, t I just had enough. So oh, uh, <laughs> I love my wife, but I don't want those spaces now. I like that. I usually go to, see, I'm Catholic. Uh, so you just yeah. go in. A lot of kneeling. It's an, That's tiring. That is, well, here's the thing with kneeling. I like it. You get a little break. Uh, you pretend you're yeah. praying, but you're really not. <laughs> you know, and then you got to go up for the body of Christ. Yeah. You get a body of Christ, a body of who? We just get it's called prasad. prasad. Prasad, I think they say, but yeah, it's just like um, I don't know how to. It's like a sweet thing, and then at the end they feed you afterward, also. So you have to hang out. So how long is the church? How long is the service? That's a few. That's a, depending on when you get there, a couple hours, <sighs> a couple hours. But you get a meal. You guys do everything days. too long. Well, how long is Catholic service? That's long. Forty-five minutes. He comes in, does a couple things. You get up, yeah. you kneel, yeah, and then he does the body of Christ in the then, temple, in and out. No food necessarily. You got to pay for it by the Hindu you, temple in and out. In and out? How long? Five minutes if you want. Ten minutes. Really? Yeah, you go. There's no service as far as I know. They might do an arti at the end, which is... Really? That's a few minutes. That's one song. In Hang on one second. Can you go yell at that guy? <laughs> I mean, this is doing a podcast. I mean, you have a real studio. You don't have this. You guys don't have this soundproofed? No. 
<laughs> this is this is a guy's apartment. This is Noam's Wait, apartment. When they restructure, are they going to soundproof? I don't think you can on that. <laughs> There's a fucking douchebag out front who left his stupid. <laughs> I mean, guys, go find somebody for me. Go use your How autism that power all the time. Yeah, yeah. all the time. All, we do the one during the day. It's usually trucks ba- backing up, delivering. Oh, beep, oh beep. God, dude, so um, well, yeah, I think I think that's good that you. A lot of comics don't believe in anything. Yeah, and I think that sucks. It's the loser shit. I just think that any religion, I don't care what it is, even if you're you have it in you, that you're giving your kid and you you have some um, moral compass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where it's yeah, like, yeah. don't hurt people, be nice. Yes. Treat people the right way. If you don't have that, if you grew up without the moral compass, I think you grow up a little fucked up. Yeah, it's I, tough. I think you do. You don't you don't have that, you know, I'm not saying that you have to go to church every week or whatever, but I'm I think you gotta have some type of like my I pray. My kid sees me pray yeah. and he'll get down next to me and start praying. That's he has no idea what he's doing. How old is he? He's ten. That's great. But he has a moral compass. Yes. Like I, one of my best days in life when I saw him and we. <laughs> yeah, the timing. The timing was so good. Same guy. <laughs> Hang on. I'm praying. One pray- of my best days in life. I'm praying. I'm praying for, to my God right now. Whoa. <laughs> it Look worked. how fast that was. Yeah, my, gro- my God works. Yeah. <laughs> my God works. Mine is taking his time. I just <laughs> be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. My God works. I cuz I have other saints that can help me with stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, we got yeah. we got different gods. Yeah, if I lose stuff, I like Saint, Saint what was it Saint uh what was it? Saint Anthony. If we lose something, you just go right to Saint Anthony. He'll find it within 30 minutes Probably or less. Stole it, this Italian motherfucker. <laughs> Easy with that. <laughs> my bad. My bad. He's the guy who took it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> He's going to charge you big to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> now you uh, you got this thing with Schultz, and now this thing takes off. Yeah. When you started it, did you know? No. I knew I had chemistry with Andrew. That was all I knew. Yeah. I don't know much, but I just know when I have chemistry with somebody. And Andrew and I have been good friends for years. Yeah. And I remember he started a podcast with Charlemagne, Brilliant Idiots, in like 2012 yep. or whatever it was. Yeah. And I remember I, I told him when he said, I'm going to start a podcast with Charlemagne. I said, this is the only time I've ever been jealous of you. Yeah. And he had already done it. But I was like, I just knew how good it would be. Yeah. And I, in the back of my mind, I didn't want to say this out loud because I didn't want him to feel obligated to do anything. But yeah. it was like, I think if we had a pod, it could do really well. Yeah. And then 2016, 2017, we started talking about doing our own. He started kind of wanting to do his own podcast as yeah. well. He and I were talking. And then we started 2017. And I thought it could be big enough. But I had no idea what it, this thing was going to become. Right. It's and again, I thought it could pay bills. I thought it could pay well. I thought it could help with my profile. But it's become such a thing that I'm like, this is wild. This is crazy. Well, I look. You know, it's funny to me. I knew Andrew way back in the day. Yeah, when he was he worked. Dude, I remember a conversation you two had in 2008, probably outside of the, the Village Lantern. I, you didn't know me. Yeah, I just overheard y'all, or I just saw y'all talking for like 90 seconds. Yeah, but uh, you were telling him about some web series he was doing. You were like, you were great in that. I think well, it was a uh, comic radio or something. Well, I remember he came here. He he finally got in here, and you know he's such a uh, alpha. Yeah, he's an alpha guy, yeah. and you know you sat at the table, and I, I think me and him would go toe to toe every once in a yeah. while, and smash each other. Yeah, but he always could take, he could take a pounding. Yeah, you know if even if you got him, he'd be like, all right, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he could give it, mm-hmm. but then I saw him doing stand up. I was started watching his clips. I'm like. Dude, you you know he's fucking he's funny man. Yeah, he's really hard, turned funny. a corner with yeah. his with his comedy, and that's when I was like, man, you know, I actually called him up one. T- I texted him one time. I'm like, dude, I just saw a clip of you, <clears throat> and it really it was really good, dude. You yeah. you you uh you turned. I love seeing when somebody gets it. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's a it's a it's a different thing they're doing, and right. he he definitely did that. Now. And I saw what you guys were doing on the show, and it was just so unique and funny. I love when you guys, all right, turn your phone sideways. Yeah, yeah. It was so annoying. Yeah, that was them, to be honest with you. I, I it was stupid. I'm for that, but it was not. But it was, was stupid, them. but it annoyed. I go, dude, if you tell me to turn my phone sideways again, I'm going to fucking kill you. Right. But it was so, you had to do it. Yeah. And then you went into this thing, and then I started watching the podcast a little bit and the yeah. clips. And yeah. It was, uh, I I've, I loved what it was doing, and now the fact that he's you know, 
right. killing it. You guys are right. killing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're killing it. Thank you. And now, but you, but you, a lot of times, you know, guys will be on that, and but you, you're, you're actually taking that and doing your own thing. Yeah, which I, is a hard thing to do because if you don't, if you can't turn it, that's yeah. that's a that can be a tough thing. Yeah, I just always I know my number one thing in my life is stand up. Yeah, and so stand up that's a it's not a team sport. The podcast is a team sport. Be a yep. team player. Stand up is that's you up there, and and that's what I ultimately got into this thing for right so the podcast is amazing and such a blessing but if i'm not constantly trying to feed stand up and get better at stand up and take over stand up for lack of a, a better word yeah what am i doing and that's right. one thing i definitely learned from watching andrew was what work ethic is work, like i yeah. i always was like oh i'm obsessive about comedy but i i'm obsessive like i think about it a lot being obsessive in action is different than obsession in thought right obsessive in action is like yo everything i do is constantly how do i get there how do i be a better stand-up where do I, how what takes me everything i do pretty yeah. much yeah not like i'm some whatever i fuck around too but for the most part it's all a tunnel vision toward this thing and everything is trying to go to that yeah i i was that for so long you know yeah. and i i was just talking to therapy about this it's like 10 years ago when i had the kid i was like I had to turn all that obsession into the business. Yeah. Into like, I didn't want to fu fuck yeah. up being a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to turn it all into that. Yeah. And then I had to really turn up the therapy shit. Yeah. And I really had to get into like um, f my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like absolutely. I moved out of the city. I moved up there and... It was like you know I I you know I I get, I leave to go home. Yeah. Like my whole thing is I want to get back to that house. Yeah. But now it's a weird thing because he's getting older, and I know there's going to be a point where he's going to be like, Dad, I'm I'm going out, uh, I'm hanging out. So uh, I'm yeah. kind of getting to that point now where it's like I'm kind of turning back into, all right, I gotta I gotta get back into this Which game. Is, you played it perfectly, actually. As a dad, that's the perfect way to do it. What do you mean? You spent formative years with your son. Yeah. You're very involved in his life. Yeah. You took a little step back from stand-up. You're still in it. Yep. But you weren't as obsessive. And now when he doesn't quite need you as much in terms of time investment, yeah. you're putting your time towards something else. You're not sitting at home being like, where the fuck is my son? You're being very mature, I think, as a dad and being like, okay, I want my son to have his independence and I want to use this time to also kind of rediscover the things that I loved. Mm. And I'll, he knows I'm always going to be there. And right. I will always be there if, you well, know. Well, it's funny, too, because even this weekend, I brought him to uh, Poughkeepsie Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. I was like, uh, you can come with me. So I mean, do you want to come Friday or Saturday? He goes, both. Oh, that's awesome. So I took him up. Yeah, it's awesome. But Max and Joe, my kid, my kid's me. Yeah. He's 10. Same shoes. He's going to be, the kid's going to be a monster. He's got his wife's blood in him so he's gonna be like six something he's a oh, big fuck. kid right wow yeah he's a big kid so he's up there with them and i'm like okay guys i'm gonna go on stage you watch him halfway through he's on stage he comes up on stage with me i'm like guys guys what are you doing and he's like what's up and i'm like joe he goes i tried <laughs> i'm like tried what you're an adult tell him no he goes i did and then he these two fucking beta males. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking. So the second show, I go, listen, don't. <laughs> you got to watch him. Don't, <laughs> don't let him, you know what I mean, come in. I don't want him to see yeah. my act. Yeah. So uh, halfway through the fuck, like we're doing my thing. He actually made a disguise. He got oh sunglasses, God, made a mustache. Broken. That's adorable. And sat second row for the rest of my show. And then at the end of the show, he comes on stage with his disguise. I go, Joe, what the fuck? He goes, I, I tried. <laughs> tried what? He's 10, you fucking pussies. What did you try? What? Oh, he's excited to get on mic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, Max, uh, you know, you, you probably shouldn't sit through these jokes, you know? Let's, let's go play some chess, That's man. terrible, dude. You're a grown-ass man. He's 10 years old. I tried to make activities for us to do, play yeah. games and stuff. You ever like, tried just saying no? Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, because you're a beta male. <laughs> Tell him you're going to take his phone away. Did you, did you want maybe, me to tape him to the Yeah, maybe tape? fucking physically <laughs> grab him and go, I said no, you pussies. <laughs> you two assholes. You tell me I could physically touch him. You can hit my kid. <laughs> oh. I give you permission <laughs> to fucking hit him. That changes everything. I mean, <laughs> dude, first of all, he's been, in, he's been studying with Igor Gracie for three years. 
don't hit him because he'll choke you out. Last thing I want to do is see Joe Russell passed out in the back because <laughs> my, my son tapped him. He tried to leg sweep me. <laughs> I fucking love my kid. Yeah. I He's, love it. I love that he tried to leg sweep this fucking spaghetti. You know, I mean, what if he just got decked in the face? Would you be like, that's what you can't leg sweep a human being? I fucking, God bless you. That's the yeah. boss in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, but it, it's it's funny that, you know, that that's coming back into play now. But I do, I see that with you guys that you're you look at man you're on a mission to do yeah. this and you you got your special now this special's with who is this you just shot it got it myself put it out myself uh price picks shouts they helped me with like we did like a sponsorship yeah and that's the only reason i could make my money back on this because youtube yeah. doesn't pay like what it costs to put out a spin right yeah i know so we're tr doing that it's 1.5 million on youtube i put it on x it's at 1.6 there which is cool yeah. Uh, but the YouTube views I was heavily focused on, and they're starting to plateau a bit in terms yeah. of growth. Yeah. And I'm already just fucking sinking in de depressive spirals about how I pick it back up. Don't you should put it on? You know, you should throw it on PunchUp.Live. Do it on uh, PunchUp. You know why? Because they they pay you. No, they don't pay uh, you. But I'll tell you. But live. they do pay you in a certain way because you get emails. Oh. You so everybody that goes to watch it over there, you can add a little something extra, or maybe a little part that you cut out yeah and yeah, people yeah. go over there and they just all they gotta do is give your email yeah. and then you see that's amazing you, dude you must you be can, getting like a dozen emails from you, this. I, got, <laughs> I got actually 22 okay. no i got thousands really dude i took killbox off of louis site put it on punch up yeah i can now i got thousands of emails of fans that's amazing and that's instead of youtube cute. getting them yeah instead not. of instagram getting them I know where they're from, their age, their gender. I know, I, dude. I I have fans in fucking uh, Minneapolis. I I have Houston, Dallas, yeah, like dude. places I've never been. I got, I can see. I have all these fans, and I can. All right, I'm gonna go there. Then here's the thing: I can send an email. Mm -hmm. I can be like, "Look, man, I'm yeah. coming out." And it goes right to their email. Yeah, and they show up. So it's actually for me. Uh, a cool place yeah. to, because you get the to get the data. The data is big. you get the data. You know no, that that's the big. data is that's big. big. It's big, big, man. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we got a little of your special. Can we can we check that out? Let's yeah, check it of course, out, dude. Of course. All right, here it is. Ready? And it's on YouTube right now. Yeah. You want your headphones? Uh, yeah. Put the headphones on. This might the first minute might get flagged because there is a song that is I had to get cleared or whatever. Yeah. Um, so minute. Leave it mute. Maybe the yeah the first minute is just a dance. Can you with can, the over can, rap song? Can we sing the song? I can't it's I think rap. It is? It's a indie. It's a Indian dance over a hip hop song from that Mexican OT who's a phenomenal rapper from Texas. Really, but I'm from Texas and I'm Indian, so I like and I filmed it in Houston. So like, yo, this is this is the move. Um, can we play two seconds of it? No. Yeah, you, maybe. Play you guys might play play a little bit. YouTube rules. I mean, you could just play it and mute it. I mean, yeah, it's almost over anyway as, as they try to figure out the sound. I, heard it, I played it for a sec. Oh, okay. But yeah, then, you know. I thought you might have like a bit in mind that you wanted, but you're just playing the full hour 18. That is probably one of the gayest things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> <Are you> fucking... <laughs> Wow, that is the fucking just gay. No one told you that was gay. <laughs> I mean, whoa, wee, wee, wee. <laughs> what the fuck, man? We get it. You're Indian. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, man? my God. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, kidding. my God. I'm kidding. Let me see. The, I want to see you walk out. What do you walk out? Here we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh. All right. Look at you, dude. That's fucking great. Now. Yeah. Wow, there you go. All right. Look at everybody standing. Look at that, dude. Good for you. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. Wow, you look fantastic. They, lo they loved the intro. That's why they stood. Yeah, they should. <laughs> but it, was it Indian people? Now, do you uh, A lot of Indians, but not enough. Well, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm saying that somewhat jokingly, but there is a there's a weird thing with Indians where at some point, they they kind of align and they go, at least in America, they're like, oh, that's our guy? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And usually it takes other people validating you. Like oh. you, if I had a Netflix credit or like a big Netflix credit yeah. or like, um, I remember Aziz 
Indians didn't really fuck with Aziz like that heavily. But yeah. then when he did those late night appearances, all of a sudden Indians in mass were going to his show. Right. Hassan with the he had the net he had the YouTube or the Netflix special, then that show on Netflix, and then all of a sudden Russell Peters. thirty thousand tickets on yeah. on uh now Russell kinda did it organically. But yeah. since then, no nobody has done it organically. Right. Usually we need somebody else to validate you and then we're like, Oh, you guys like him? Okay, we're in. Netflix says he's funny, okay, we're in. And then you're out of here. Right. But it weirdly takes that was the biggest risk I thought putting it on YouTube is I might not get me the Indian fans that I want because right. they need external validation. Really? I think that's a big reason we want degrees. Like, if you ask Indians, parents, would you rather your son make $130,000 a year and be a Harvard graduate or $180,000 a year and be a four-year whatever? They'd be like, Harvard, not even a question. If you said 200000 a year from a community college, they'd probably say 130000 from Harvard. Because of the... Harvard. You're validated. Yeah, you're validated. So, so that's, yeah. That, so I have Indian fans for sure. Right. But there's a point, a tipping point where... The shows will become very Indian. Like you yeah. will probably be uncomfortable, yeah. and I will love that time. I tell, can I be honest with you, dude? Yeah, I got a lot of Indian fans from doing Louis. Really? When I was on Louis, yeah, the Bang Bang stuff. Yeah, and, I mean, those were great scenes. I, I had so many Indian fans from that show. A lot of Indian people like Louis' show, and I love Indian they're great audiences. It's we're not easily offended. No, they're not offended. They smart. love to laugh. Yeah. they're fucking smart. Yeah, I love. I mean. I you know it's I always said this you need a people yeah if you can get a people yeah you know I mean I don't have a people like I'm not Italian enough to go yeah yeah you know what I mean you know I'm not I'm not white enough to be like you know are you full white an Irish guy you that sounds like you called me the N word right there for some reason I came yeah is that is that what Indian people call you full white no you look mixed because you you're too dark to be I'm Irish Italian Irish Italian there it is so I you know the mix don't fight there's no there's no mix that's a strong mix too that's yeah there's no like the controversial mix the the I mean the mix like the Irish Italian not supposed to fuck each other right no they fuck a lot. Oh, right. oh, in Boston, that's usually what fucks. Wow. Oh yeah, and um, the Italians. I don't have the Italians. I don't have the uh, mix. Yep. The whites, you know, the white. I don't have a people. Yeah. Like I want a people. Yeah. yeah I just yeah. don't know who to go after. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I wish I had that thing that I could. Uh, you know, this is what I'm going to do, but yeah. I, I don't. I guess if it's anything, it's blue collar. Like if you see my show, it's just me. Yeah, that's you fire. Know, Blue collar's fire, actually. I love. Let me Fun tell you audiences. something. Blue collar's the best. Yeah. Yeah, I love looking out and just seeing a guy in a dirty fucking plumbing hoodie <laughs> yeah. from his company. His union hat on. Yeah, his just tired wife. <laughs> he loves you. At the end. Of, yeah, uh, you, you want a picture? No, I'll take it for him. Uh, um, but yeah, I guess, and it, it's weird because I now that like I'm doing the bonfire with Jay, I have these. Um, younger fans mm -hmm. that are coming out from that yeah. which i love I, I love seeing a bunch of dudes right. um but my fans i have like this swath of fans because dude i came up with dane yeah you know and dane was i mean dane was doing it shout out to that dude he was doing what everybody's doing now back yeah in 2006 that guy was a visionary 2007 2008 this yeah. kid was i remember you know i so it's weird like that was the time when it was like, okay, here's your, this would be like, if we, if podcasting was big back in that time, like yeah. MySpace was big. Yeah, yeah. Social media. Because of him. Be, well, yeah. Comedian wise, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think he was, he was, as comedian wise, yeah, everybody yeah. kind of followed his lead on yeah. that shit. But uh, yeah, I mean, if social media was what it was now back then, if podcasting was out back then like it is now, yeah. oh my God, me and Dane doing a podcast yeah, from. A Sufi podcast that would suck because I'd probably have a Sufi tattoo on me right now <laughs> <laughs> on my tits. You know what I mean, dude? You got to get it. Um, it would. It was. Uh, yeah, but he was. I remember, dude. You know, flying G fives and nobody was doing that shit. Yeah, he. Yeah. I mean, we we're on the buses he's and we we're doing star. arena. I mean, he was a fucking rock star before anybody was doing it. I was. Well, I was listening to an old clip of his recently, like yeah. four days ago, and I was like, oh, I think now I get what he was doing. It was Seinfeld. With very, with like insane performance level. Like nobody, the minutia type of comedy was typically done like unthea not theatrically. Yep. And then he added theatrics to 
that kind of like smart everyday humor. It seemed like, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, he was, he was, a th- and he was good looking. He was a theater, out. he was a theater queer. <laughs> oh, really? Well, he was, yeah, he was high school. He was theater, you know, Greece, Kanicki, all that uh, shit. Uh, so yeah. he mixed stand up with performance. Yeah. And he created, I think he created a style of comedy. That's what Bill Burr says. Yeah. Yeah. That he, that people, you know, um, I think a lot of those guys back then, you know, Patrice, Billy, me, we all had our own silhouette of what we did mm-hmm. on stage. And then I think comedy now um, is variations of that. Yeah. You know, where, you know, it's hard to stand out now. So if yeah. you do, if you have your thing, yeah. it's pretty goddamn big that you push through that mm-hmm. and silhouetted yourself on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but dang, yeah, that, I remember doing those tours and... I mean, dude, just crazy shit. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, like I said, there was a time where it was like, all right, do I keep doing this or do I go and try to get a family? Yeah. And I went and tried to get a family, and all of a sudden this shit blew up. Yeah. And now it's just Every- podcasting is, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Everybody in them, I mean, there's, there's regular people that have podcasts. So many losers have podcasts. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and it's sad because some of them are interesting, but there's so much, you know... It's nonsense, yeah. Do you think the podcasting, it's kind of like people are... Stu- I think a lot of the smaller podcasts will kind of disappear. You think so? Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's a big undertaking. Yeah. Like, you do a lot for this, I'm assuming. Flagrant is a massive thing. Like, yeah. even the idea of starting another pod on my own is like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? It's another... Oh, dude, I, I mean, I got, f- I'm got. i on Bone to Pick with Verzi. Yeah. I do the regs now. Oh, yeah, Bone to Pick with yeah. you and, uh, and Albanese, Albanese's studio. Mike Albanese's Mike the- Albanese, yeah, yeah. love... He's, yeah. he's our he's producer. He's the best. Oh, he's great on the show, too. He's yeah. such a part of the... Yeah. The thing, love you know, which I love when that organically happened, that he yeah. just became the, like the third guy on yeah. the show yeah. instead of just being back there. Yeah. No, I love doing that show with him. Uh, Virgie's the best, you know. Yeah. Um, Sweetest guy. He's a great guy. I mean, not the best, but he's, no, I'm kidding. He's <laughs> the, what the fuck you mean, dude? What the fuck was that? Um, uh, oh, you're one of those? All right. Relax, Verzi. <laughs> um, yeah, but podcasting is, I feel like now it's like hit its limit. Like yeah. what new, yeah. what, 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 there's no, there's nothing new anymore. Yeah. It's not. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, what, what's out there is what's out there. Yeah. And you know, there'll be some new ones that pop up. But it won't be that the bubble is kind of, the run is over of new hot yeah. pods. I think. Yeah. Some yeah. shit will get through for sure, but I think it hit its kind of apex in terms of like. It's apex. Heat. Yeah. I wonder what the next thing's going to be. I wonder what that thing is going to be in comedy because comics, I mean, bro, listen, man. More comics are playing the garden. I mean, it's like music. I think I think the industry replaced music. It might have with stand up. With stand up, because I mean, it's one dude, two dudes, three dudes. You don't need a whole fucking band. You don't need a lighting. Re- you need a microphone. You need a stage. Here's what I'll also say: We're never going to be as cool as musicians, but going to a concert is almost never as good as listening to the album. Going to a comedy show is almost always better than watching it online. 100%. So that is definitely in our favor. We'll, and music will, comedy will never penetrate your soul the way music will. Like yeah. music, it's like, a, I've heard, maybe it was Andrew said, it's like a virus where it just like takes over. You can't stop it. It's yeah. your whole, it's all you think about that song yeah. stuck in your head all day. Comedy will never be that, but it will always be better live than it will on TV and music is almost always the opposite. Very few people go, oh, that, that, guy's, that guy's concert is better than his album. Yeah. Or whatever they're calling it now. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, like I say, come see me live. Yeah. You know, you can watch my special. Just come, come to my live. fucking show. Come see me live. You know, the, the, the energy in a room it's is different. totally different than watching. You watch my special, but it's there's something, I don't know, it's weird. It doesn't translate uh, yeah. as much as it does when you're in that room. Us sharing that energy, and comedy clubs in particular, and I've never headlined a theater but like when you can see the guy, when we all feel the guy in the small space that I'm talking to, crowd work wise especially, mm. it's just a fuck. There's a tension there that we all feel, that we all share. Mm. In a theater, the room can get so big that tension's not really there. Right. Like doing crowd work. If I'm doing MSG, God willing, one day I'll headline MSG. But if I'm doing crowd work with someone there, there's no real tension from the guy in the upper deck looking at this guy. Right. But in a do you, is club, that is that your goal to do like big? Oh re- yeah, I want to be. I want to be the best ever, and that was something I was really uncomfortable saying for a long time, you know, yeah. probably two three years ago. That made me uncomfortable. Yeah, because I'm be, I'm I'm doing it too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, everybody, and <laughs> it's really vulnerable to say out because you might fail. You're putting something out there that's incredibly hard to do, pro- possibly impossible. Because like, who's the best ever? We're all gonna David have our own answers. See, I I would say Patrice or Chappelle. That'd be my Patrice is dead. 
Patrice is dead. So, <laughs> so you can't really the greatest ever. You know, no, prior. no, I'm kidding. Yeah, Patrice, but it's Chappelle. I love every time somebody Patrice. brings Patrice's name, he's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> that was always Andrew. Be- die. I know, but that'd be funny if Patrice is if he did live and his next album sucked. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, Mr. P. You're listening to that okay. album and you're like, oh, he's still getting better. Which is insane. I, I tell you, man, I brought out, uh, they had the Kings of Comedy on in my cigar lounge. I said this before, and I was like, all right. Yeah. And I go, put on Patrice. Whole room of white, fucking blue collar dudes smoking cigars. Losing it. Losing it. Yeah. Seconds in. Yeah. Just losing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's his hat right there. Get the fuck. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's his hat. He wore that hat. Yeah. yeah but he, to say I want to be the greatest ever, it's, we all kind of secretly want it. But saying it out loud puts it out there, this thing that I'm probably going to fail at. But you got to be okay with being like, yeah, that's cool. Y'all think I fail. But if I go for that and I land anywhere near it, I'm going to be, I'm going to die very happily. I don't know. I, 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 I just, I look at comedy like I just want to be good. I want to be great. I want to be, you know, when people, when I'm brought up, oh, Bobby's fucking great. Yeah. I'm cool, you know, because, you know, like I look, do I want to play MSG? Do I want to have to go on a tour and do a bunch of shit? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm, I love, you know, I like doing, I like doing stand up. I love doing theaters. I'm not saying, I don't know. I'm I, I, like that thing that maybe I had back when Dane was doing, like, I'll be here someday. Yeah. I don't know if that's in me anymore. That's, probably having a family change that for you. I'll, I'll tell you what grew it for me. I didn't headline. I didn't have an agent until 2019, and I started comedy in 2007. Yeah. And I would only do these 15-minute spots. I never got the industry heat. I never had anything. I was on a couple shows on MTV. Still, agents would look at me and be like, nah, I don't, for whatever reason. Yep. Any showcase I did, nah, never went far. Any, so I would only get 15-minute spots in the city whenever I got them. I wasn't at the cellar. I wasn't, and I would look at guys, and I'd be like, dude, I don't know if I can do what they can do. Yeah. And then when I finally got to start headlining and doing hours, the yeah. growth I felt I was like, oh, it's not a matter of if I can. And even after COVID, it was, oh, 2021 is when I finally really got out on the road. Yeah. And I'm 14 years deep at that point. I'm growing so much, doing five 45-minute sets a night. And I'm like, oh, those guys that I thought, I don't know if I can do what they can. It wasn't a matter of talent. It was a matter of reps. And now I, f- I felt like I'm all of a sudden that guy seems catchable. And then in my mind, I'm like, I think I, I think I got there. And I think I can keep going and keep going. And now that I've grown so much in the past two plus years now nothing seems impossible to me now it's all yeah. it's all attainable well here's I can the thing go get it. i mean that i i believe in positive thinking i believe in you know i believe in affirmations i believe in all that manifestation and stuff like that i really do if there's anything i believe in i believe in that stuff but you know i know that if <laughs> i'm such an emotional i remember the first time i headlined a theater in boston mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh it was the wilbur yeah, and it was awesome. the first time that I Same. did that theater, and I sold it out, and I came out, and I was at the, I did my show, and I killed, and at the end of it, I got all emotional. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I just want to thank everybody for coming here, and I want to let you guys know how much this means to me. And I heard a dude in the crowd go, "Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you, good night. I was like, okay. Yo, <laughs> it was like... You let uh, that fucking loser affect you. Yep, bro. I did. I know, to we all day. do that. But he was a loser. Yep, he was a fucking that loser, was, full blown. That was my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a big fucking I was, loser. I was a family member. I'm big like, no, fucking I'm loser, this guy, right? <laughs> well, it did. It just... It just you know what I mean? It was like, okay, fucking relax. Yo, fuck that guy for in his mouth forever. <laughs> I know, but I was getting a little. It was the Wilbur. It wasn't the Garden. You know yeah, what I mean? Fair. It but was the Wilbur's son. The Wilbur. Oh, I'm not from Boston, and yep. I would hear so and so headline in the Wilbur. I almost cried when I looked up. I remember the day before we go there for like, let's just see how this is gonna go. I had another dance intro that night, but <laughs> you did, yeah, yeah. Why? Because it's the Wilbur. You brought dancers? No, nah, there were some people from Boston hit me up, and they're like, hey, we would love to do a thing. And I was like, let's do it. Let's line it up. So was it Indian dancers? Yeah, of course, dude. You got to do that. You can't, you can't have like- I always the- got to rep my set, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to rep my set. But I remember the day before, I'm looking up, yeah. and I'm just like, yo, this is the fucking Wilbur. I remember so-and-so headlining the Wilbur, so-and-so, like all these people. And I'm like, yo, I want to get there one day. And I got there. And that's, an, that's a fucking amazing thing. So the-, <laughs> so the <laughs> You didn't have Get the out. you couldn't have the fly oh, no girls worries. come out. You have to have Indian. <laughs> so took you it, that long to think of fly girls? No, I'm just thinking that you can't ever like the dancing thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
See, I give you credit because if I ever had dancers in front of me, like yeah. like Irish dancers, they'd be like, "What?" They'd be like, "What the fuck is this asshole doing?" You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're not the Irish. If you were the Irish comic, that shit would be flames. I know. I don't have a people. Yeah, I know. Dude, I mean, you need people. people. If you got a people, that's yours. Can I have? Do, would they do it for me? The Indian yeah, dancers? Absolutely, they would really? Do. I could make that happen. I would love my next special to open. I'm gonna. <laughs> Could I steal that? A thousand percent, yeah. I'm fucking stealing it. You just need to do it at the Wilbur and at the end be like, guys, I'm headlining the Wilbur. It means so much to me. You, you know, need to do that exact same speech the same, the same way. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to finish well. it, and then they're going to come out, and then I want them to throw all that. Holy, yeah. Holy powder, yeah, yeah. The holy powder on me. I just want to look like a troll fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. just <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can do that. I can line that whole thing up. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Easy text message. Listen to me right now. Uh, I talk about it all the time. People get sick of me. Guys, it's time to get the best T-shirt. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing the underwear. I'm usually full True Classics. The T-shirt, I'm telling you right now, not everybody has a Brad Pitt Fight Club body. Most of us are just regular dudes. But here's the thing with this. I don't know why they figured it out and other people haven't. It's the best T-shirt ever made. It's tight up top. And it has a little loose down the bottom. So when you raise your hand up or you go to pick something up or you're in the Walmart or wherever, your stomach and your side fat doesn't hang out and it's not sticking to you. See, oh, I remember my old T-shirts. You could see my belly button hernia through them. It was disgusting. True Classics has figured it out. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first. Tighter in the arms and chest, but with the perfect amount of room in your midsection. The best part is that True Classics sells their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with a two or three pack of t-shirts today and feel the difference for yourself. I'm tell I wear them all the time. They have uh, active wear, I have the hoodies, the sweatpants, the workout gear. I'm t a lot of times I'm in full true classics head to toe. If they made a sneaker I'd wear it. If they made socks I'd wear it. That's the only thing. No matter what your schedule you want to feel and look your best, this is what you got to do. True Classics even has a 100% Perfect fit guarantee. Did you hear what I said? 100% perfect fit guarantee. And super easy to return, okay? So you got nothing to lose. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash dude, D-U-D-E, and save up to 25% off your first order. Please support the show and tell them we sent you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classics. Trueclassics.com slash dude. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's like I always think of specials, too. Where did, where did you film your special? Uh, Houston, Texas. White well, Oak Music Hall. White Oak Music Hall. Now, was that mean something or was it just the place you wanted no, to do? Why Houston? Dude, trying to get a... Texas, I knew I wanted to do. Houston, I had not done this material yet. It was one of the markets. I And I was trying to find a space that worked. And Mo Amer filmed his special there and his sound guy mm -hmm. does sound for flagrant or at least his sound guy for that special and he was right. like yo this this place is good acoustically yeah so i looked at it and then when we went there there was just like lighting wise anything we wanted to do we could do mm -hmm. it's a great space yeah the owners were cool as fuck shouts to juggy so a indian guy so like it all kind of lined up and also getting a venue is to when you're doing all this on your own you have no idea what a pain in the ass every single step is yeah. until you do it but getting a venue that wasn't too big wasn't too small would accommodate everything, had the lighting structure we needed, all that setup we needed. It was just like a lot. Did Andrew help you at all? He would give me advice, but I tried not to bother him too much because right. I knew he was, you know, at the time, I'm pretty sure I knew his wife was pregnant. Yeah. So it was like, let me not, and he did so much for me. I'm like, I try not to bother yeah. him with stuff that I think I can handle on my own. Tell you what, he is, he's that guy, like even my special, he would. He loves helping. He he does. Yeah. He he helped me out with videos and how to do it. And, and he doesn't get enough credit for that. Like a no. lot of people, I've seen people he helped shout out other people on pods, and I'm like, what the fuck is that, dude? Really? Why would you not be? Yeah. Hey, his special. I would. Uh, they going on that show with you guys. I believe you know that was before Rogan and Segura, and I did all the big shows. Your show, I think, was the one that really put my special over. That's awesome. And and kind of. Paid for it. I think we paid for the special. That's awesome. In the first week, um, that you know, that was the one thing is like Louis put all the money up for it, yeah. 
And, you know, he had come to me at the cellar, like, I think three weeks before. And I was like, you know, we could do it at the Village Underground for like 12 grand. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I didn't, you know, I, I, I don't want it. I want my special. To me, when I did my special, like when I did, um, when I did um, Village Underground. Yeah. The Village Underground meant something to me. I needed. I wanted to be the first guy to shoot a special at the cellar. Yeah. And, you know, live from the Village Underground. I always remember, like, Zach Galifianakis from the Purple Onion. Right. It was like that thing where the pl the place was part of the special. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, shooting this next thing, I was like, Louie, it needs to be different. It needs growth. It needs... I, I'm thinking Elvis's comeback special. Right. I'm thinking in that little box. I want it to be. I want to replicate a little fucking kill box. And I was like, I don't care if you use an iPhone. Save whatever money you have. I don't care. Just as long as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And he he literally. Then we're doing it there. Like he was like, I, whatever. That's, you, awesome. that's cool. We're doing it there. Yeah. And he spent all a lot of money. It's shocking how much it can cost. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. If we don't make, if I don't make this money back for him. It's going to be a thing. Yeah. And I remember yeah. the first week, he was like, well, yeah, we paid for the special already. Oh, that's great. I was like, ooh, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Because that's all I wanted to do was pay him back. Right. And of course, later on, get a check. Yeah. Which was nice, too. Um, but yeah, that was that that type of, um, you know, putting, you know, even you doing the dances, how I said it was silly. But yeah. It's your vision of what it's yeah, going to yeah. be, which is important, yeah. I think, too. And, you want, and that's one thing I learned from Andrew about. Just, I remember he did Town Hall 2019, 2018, something like that. But he had like this very choreo lightning choreographed intro with, uh, I think, a Michael Bublé, Bublé song or something, New York, some New York song. Yeah. But he, I saw him for hours before the show getting the lighting right. They still fucked it up. Yeah. These, these union guys, they're probably going to your show later. But uh, <laughs> I remember being like, oh, it's always a moment. It's always a moment if you want it to be. You are, this is a performance, and they should walk out feeling like I got more than just a comedy show. Yeah. So with the special, that was just, it was like not even a question. We're going to do something to, I use the term elevate a lot. It probably drives everybody that works with me crazy. But let's elevate it somehow. Yeah. How can we elevate it? Oh, the dance, that'd be, that's elevating it a bit from just a regular comedy special. Sure. Yeah. Right away, you know, this is a little bigger than a comedy special or a normal comedy special. Yep. It, it there's something different yeah. than than just hey what's up yeah. yeah like I'm dude my my special was I think we talked about it like as they were calling me out some lady ran by <laughs> who had to take a piss yeah sorry was it like a medical event? yeah some lady almost died yeah I, I mean twenty minutes into the first show we had two sets yeah twenty <laughs> twenty minutes into the first one I looked down this lady's going like this <laughs> and then she fell into her house and then I just hear. Bobby, <laughs> Bob, help. And I was like, w I'm in a bit. Yeah. I'm like, what? And it help her. And I'm like, ah, here's you want my, me to do. I mean, here's my water. Yeah. That's the fuck you want me to do. Dude, they fucking, they, dude, the, I mean, let me tell you something. The place shut down. The lights went up. Chairs were being thrown <laughs> onto the stage. I remember just being off stage by the door, just be like, it's ruined. Yeah. It's ruined. Of course. And they're dragging this lady out. And then as soon as they dra drag her by Louis, he went, okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he was like, as soon as she's gone, let's go. Yeah, what happened to her, this selfish bitch? She, I think she got, it was so, the thing that we didn't take into account is we shot our special in the summer. Heat. In yeah. Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah, didn't, yeah. and they tried to do the best they could. Right. We had 400 people. Yeah, in there, but you know, so it was a little. If I ever shot a special in Tampa again, do it in January. Yeah, don't do it in fucking yeah. June. Yeah, thousand whenever percent. we've because it was too hot, dude. People lined up. I didn't think about this. September we filmed the special in Houston. People lined up, and I didn't do assigned seating. It's first come first serve. So people lined up five hours early, just waiting in the sun, baking. So I was out there, and I was like, Yo, the energy seems a little low, and want like the show that yeah. was Saturday that I thought would be the best show Saturday at seven. People have been there since two p.m. noon, whatever. They're tired. Tired. I didn't think about that at all. No, you got to make them cold. Yeah. Get it going. Yep. And yeah, this lady passed out and it was like, wow, this is a fucking full blown nightmare. Yeah. Here's the thing though. Like Louie walked in. I remember I got on stage and everybody did all their stuff and it was all of Louie's top people and, you know, the stuff, people that shot his special. And I walked, I was like, this is it. This is great. Louie walked in. Yeah. Looked at everything, goes, change this, do that. 
this is wrong. Put this over here. We need sixty more people. Fill it. He like he's so yeah. good. Yeah. At directing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh God, man, thank God. Yeah. Because if it wasn't, I mean, if it was any, I would have been like, this is fine. Yeah. That's and it saying. wouldn't have been. Yeah. What it was, but he, having him do it was, I, I can't. It's probably means more to me than anything else. Yeah. Because he, he was like, you should have a special. And I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that's um, so here's another thing you were on too. You were on Wilding Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, is, what the fuck? Who are you on with? Carlos Miller, Chico Bean, like a lot of these guys who are so huge now. I was DC Young Fly and I, I was on two seasons, but by the second season, I was kind of not into the whole thing. Uh, the thing that I didn't love about the show was like for four weeks, they'll do this like boot camp where you go every day for eight hours a day and they just fucking drill you to death. And the thing I'm drill you with what? The, yo, hey, if, play this game. Sing a song. You got to do this song about this. Here's the topic. All of y'all go. You'll divide us into four groups or whatever. And the thing that really, I, that is all like uh, sucks, but it's work fine. But the thing that annoys me, annoyed me and still annoys me is the way they would like kind of, the guy who ran it, the, he really enjoyed the power of like deciding how many episodes everybody got. Yeah. And he would say shit like, hey, everybody line up to play this game. And then people would be talking, and he'd be like, I guess some of y'all don't want episodes. I guess some of y'all don't want to be on episode. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm a fucking 30-year-old man. Who's a white guy? No, nah, black dude. I know. Big black dude. I know. Y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> or, I was also like, he's a big guy. Why does he have this little Napoleon complex when he's got some power? You're a big fucking guy. You yeah. shouldn't be so insecure. Yeah. But he would, I just hated lording that over my head. And that whole like four weeks of just like constantly fucking with your confidence and all that. Like, I'm a stand up. Let me go. When the lights are on, I'll be fine. Yep. Trust me. Yeah. But it was just that whole mind fuck. I didn't want to do it. And the second season, I was like, look, I'm not doing that workshop. Good. You're going to have me back. And then the guy was pretty offended by that. So he put me on one episode and then they cut my joke. It might not have been a good joke, but I know I was only on one episode because I refused to do that. And right. then that was kind of the end of it for me. That stinks. Yeah, it was. I didn't also. I also didn't know how to finesse it. I thought. I thought you're getting paid like a thousand dollars an episode or whatever. It's like dog shit money. Yeah. But the way to finesse it is then you go to these colleges, you go to these PA whatever personal appearance gigs or whatever, and get social media following out of it, and that's how you can work it. And I didn't know that, so it was something I didn't love. I really didn't enjoy the filming, like the process of it. Yeah. And I didn't know how to finesse it, so for me it was like. It's not worth it. Well, what's the guy who runs it? What's his, what's his name? Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. Yeah, he's a smart fucking guy. Really? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a sharp guy. He's a businessman. He no shit. Even him. I don't not. know if he is. He bought Radio Shack. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. I, then, yo, look up Nick Cannon's net worth. I bet you'd be shocked how high it is. Oh, I don't believe that, but he did buy Radio Shack yeah. right at the tail end Yeah, <laughs> when they had just cords. How much did he pay for it? <laughs> I don't know, but he bought Radio that's Shack. That's hilarious. I remember when he, I was like, why the fuck is he buying Radio that Shack? Is, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, dude, you don't buy something with the word Shack in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? $50 million. That's how much? Net worth? $50 million. I thought he'd be worth more than that. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in that number. Look at me, I'm a thousandaire, and I'm like, 50? <laughs> that's not a lot. I I'm disappointed in that number too, yo. <laughs> yeah, dude, I thought it was going to be like a hundred and... I thought hundreds of millions, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe well, you, you don't know shit. Well, he bought Radio Shack. Maybe he took a hit. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> he bought fucking Radio Shack. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I mean, oh, dude, God. Radio Shack was the shit at one point, and then it at the was. end, when he bought it, he was like... <laughs> Honestly, I grew up in the 90s, and it wasn't cool for me toward the tail end of the 90s. I was like, this place sucks. <laughs> yeah, Radio Shack this was Best Buy. Up. Once Best Buy was around, who needed Radio Shack? Yeah, Radio Shack. It felt like a shack. You get the same shit at CVS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know a thousand I mean? percent. Except without the attitude. Yeah. Some fucking nerd, what card do you need? Shut <laughs> the fuck up. The Radio Shack was cool. Like, it had, like, four cool things, and then wires for nerds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> You want a CPU? No, I want a bad purchase, Nick. That was a bad purchase. Um, well, he also didn't he was he, he fucks everybody. He fucked everyone. He fucked really. He fucked every hot girl you could name. Oh and, no, that's what I was gonna oh. say. Well, what are you interested in? <laughs> that's funny. No, I didn't. <laughs> that's funny. America's Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna bring that up, but he fucked everybody. <laughs> he fucked everybody. Yeah, man. Yeah, he fucked he Kim Kardashian. He fucked all of them. No shit. Yeah, even liked, with the turban. I think That's, he's still getting. It, he's got like nine kids post turban. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Did the turban fuck you up? Is that like a? My wife saw some clips of his, and this is more of a sensitive issue for her because I'm Hindu. She's Sikh. Sikh, and that's a Sikh but, thing. Yeah, but she was like, I listened to him talk about it, and he actually did. He knows what he's saying. He's not just like talking out of his ass. Can you just wear a turban? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
Anybody if you're black. Can. Yeah. Well, I, I think can't wear a turban. White people can. You might. We might think it's a little weird, but yeah, you could. You could. If I wore a turban, honestly, you look. I look like a genie. Adorable with yeah. a turban. I look, people would ask me for a wish. You. <laughs> you guys know the black guy in Dragon Ball Z? That's what he would look like with a turban, <laughs> but white. That's the nerdiest joke I've ever heard. I love it. I gotta look that up now. <laughs> Yo, what was his name? Bring him up. I want to see what he looks Mr. like. Mr. Popo. Mr. Popo. <laughs> That's Robert Kelly with a turban. <laughs> That's me in blackface, dude. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna get me canceled, That's dude. If you're running for Canadian prime minister, and you wanted to, I'm gonna look like that. I'm gonna do that on my next special. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah, that's weird. I didn't know you guys had to do all that shit. I thought you just rolled out and and Stop. and did uh, I drill you to death. And I get that it's high stakes for them, but I felt like they weren't just doing it because it was high stakes. Really, I felt like it was more of like a, like a almost like a mind fuck, like on purpose, and yeah. kind of getting off on like. Hey, we're gonna hold this over your head and see how many episodes we give you based on whatever arbitrary metric. I'm like, I, I want you to do this. How yeah. how powerful do I feel? It's it's I don't know. It kind of it, it's it's you know I guess we're like I I started an improv. Oh, and really? we yeah you were we gay. yeah I was gay yeah. And then you're I gonna be- talk about my dance and you're an improv kid. <laughs> <laughs> you flaming homosexual. Hey, 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 Robert, zip, <laughs> zap, zap. <laughs> you abject queer. As, <laughs> first of all, don't do smart gay smashing on me. <laughs> don't use the word abject. <laughs> uh, it's fucked up. I really, when it came out of my mouth, <laughs> I really, I, uh, <laughs> it was very gay. <laughs> We used to rehearse five nights a week. Oh my god, dude at the pit or what? (laughs) No, in Boston at like a fucking call like a school, like a high school gym. Did you but you're like a you had a tough childhood. Weren't you looking at these guys like they were awful? Like you're not from that. You're not that No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I was uh I was from a different type of um, I think I, even though, but even when I was hanging out with those really tough kids, yeah, I got a lot, I was never tough. Okay. Like people think, you know, oh, you, I, I, I was never tough. I was, I was in with tough, tough guys from Boston. Mm-hmm. You know, I hung out with a lot of tough people, but I was never tough. I, I became, I became tough. Okay. But not. Really, I was always just, I just always wanted to be silly. Yeah. Even when I got arrested and went to jail, I was always making people laugh. I wasn't the guy, mm-hmm. you know, fuck you and fuck that. And yeah. Yeah, I never had that really in me. I just, it was, it was, I kind of had to live that life with them because I was with, like, they would beat people up and I would feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember one time, like, we were hanging out. Somerville was the next town over, mm-hmm. which was, you know, all Irish, trash Irish. Now, Somerville is like, you know, the, you know, it's like Brooklyn now. It's, yeah. But back when I grew up, it was a violent town. Somerville yeah. Projects, the Somerville, uh, all the parks, you know, we used yeah. to hang out in parks. And I hung out at the Italian Park over in South Medford, and we would venture over to Somerville. I remember one day we went over there, and there was these Somerville kids uh, playing wiffle ball. Mm-hmm. And we went over, and usually we would fuck, fuck you, fight, and we'd be fighting. But all of a sudden, then we started playing wiffle ball. Like the kids I hang out with, hey, you want to play? So we're playing this great game, and I was so happy. And so <laughs> me and this fight. other kid from Somerville, yeah, we we're like, hey man, we're gonna go get some f- snacks. So me and this kid walked over to the store. We got uh, chips and some soda, and and uh, <laughs> we were talking. It was just like, kind of cool. Like I made a new friend, and yeah. as we're walking back with like a bag of goodies. I come back and the one of the kids from some of was radio. They had a radio with those yeah. big boom boxes. Yeah. And I just remember seeing the, as we turned the corner, hit the radio, the kid's radio was flying <laughs> and it just hit the kid I was with in the head. And I, <laughs> and I just looked at, I looked over, they were all fighting. My friend was smashing a guy with his wiffle ball bat. <laughs> My other friend was punching the kid. And then I looked at him and we just dropped the snacks and started fighting. That's hysterical. It was fucking, it was like, man, sorry, dude. We were Did friends. You win? We were friends for like a minute. No, I didn't win. I didn't lose, but I didn't win. We were kind of just throwing punches. Oh, that's sad. Dude. I remember the, I was so excited about the chips. I remember the <laughs> chips got smashed. <laughs> Even back then I was fat inside. Yeah, um, but I didn't want to. I was like, I, I, uh, I wanted. So you to, thought improv like this would be like your gay home? 
<laughs> I, don't, I think I got, you know, I got an improv, I'll tell you. I went to community college and I was going for art. You got to do it sitting like this, probably. And I, I took a, I can't sit like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking gay. Uh, we're just two gay guys. <laughs> you have a flowered shirt. Let's do it. You want to be gay? Uh, yeah, dude, you got uh, it. Look at that. I, uh, I, t- I took an acting class and they did improv for, um, for an elective or some shit. Yeah. So then we did not They had a talent show, mm-hmm. and we were like, "Let's do improv in the talent show," and that's when we, uh, my friend Al, who, who was friends with Dane, I have a friend, and he brought Dane down, oh, and we were auditioning people to be in our group. Wow. <laughs> and uh, Dane came in and just fucking killed it. And I was like, Christ. "Him." Yeah. And he, it was me. That's when me and Dane first became friends so you're like decades deep with dane i mean we were we were we were a little yeah i mean we were thick as thieves we 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 literally probably saw each other every day for years wow trying to do uh i mean trying to make it yeah trying to get the fuck out of being town right. yeah and uh and then we did it and then he kind of popped yeah and the group ended yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah. dumped us <laughs> I remember the day he said we both we had a gig as the improv group yeah and he got a gig himself but it was the same money and i was like that's it it's, it's over. over yeah it's over and yeah. then you know he skyrocketed to fame yeah and i slowly have been fucking following him yeah at a steady pace like this it's, as long as you're climbing i think it is man as long as you're i mean here's what it is as long as you're happy right yeah i i think being happy truly happy with if you look around man people think that you know you gotta become there's a lot of, I mean, you look at like the people, like I make a great living doing stand-up comic, mm-hmm. be it doing stand-up, doing pop, whatever I do, I make a great living at it. I make mm-hmm. doctor money, yeah. good doctor money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really good doctor yeah. money doing this, you know, but, you know, there's guys that are multimillionaires. Yeah. But it's all relative. Yeah. Because when you're, when you have that, you also have those bills. Yeah. You know, I have a fucking house. Yeah. I got a couple cars. It's the same shit. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if uh, you know. You know, not to say that I would fucking turn it down. That's why I get mad at people who get like mad at Matt Reif. It's like, what do you want him to say? No. Yeah. You want him to say no? No, I'm not ready yet. Fuck it. Go do your thing. Yeah. Put your little fucking theater mic on. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk about gay? <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have dancers. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. God bless the kid. No, God bless him. It's just a TED Talk mic. It's a TED Talk mic. That's it. You know what? Fuck it, dude. Do, do what you do. You make fifty million dollars, whatever you're making. God bless. He's a, he was on Wild and Out. Sweet kid. Great, really great kid. Yeah. So I mean, God bless. Make your money. That's all that matters to me, really. Yeah. Is he funny? I don't give a fuck. Is he a nice kid? Yep. Yeah. Good kid. You know, is he funny? Apparently he is, man. He's, yeah. he's, he's I, market. I, I don't watch him and go, not funny. No, his crowd work is great. But people are like, he's fucking just, who gives a shit? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. You know, I'm sure you guys get that too. Oh, yeah. You know, you guys, get, you know, what the fuck? Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck, just. My wife says, says a thing where she's like, have you ever gone onto someone else's page, even if you didn't like them, another creator? Yeah. And just left a negative comment on that person's page, and I'm I'm a hater. I I hate on some shit, and I was like, no, I don't think so. Maybe, but I don't think so. And she's like, yeah, because there's like a level of mental illness that that takes. Like yeah. there's something wrong with that person's brain. That's like, let me tell them that I hate them and they suck, and I want them to die. I think I don't know who told me this. I think it might have been Patrice. Uh, talent isn't afraid of talent. Oh, fire! That's fire. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, dude, nobody, nah, I don't give a shit. Yeah, and as I've gotten more confident in my own talent, I've gotten less, like, before, if another person was funny, I'd be like, fuck, dude. Right. And now I'm like, God bless. Yeah. Open for me. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a different different levels of everything. You know yeah. what I mean? David Tell to me, Colin Quinn. Yeah. Those guys, to me, are the funniest motherfuckers ever. Colin, you know? great, dude. I gave him COVID. You gave him what? COVID. Oh. Early. When he got COVID, that was because of me. I'm patient zero. You fuck, he came on your show. No, Chris DiStefano and Giannis Pappas came on my show. Got Giannis got COVID. I had no idea I had it. And then I tested positive, told them, and they were like, oh, all good. Don't worry about it. Then, but they had already had Quinn on their podcast. And then Quinn got it from that interaction. The one you were on. The, no, I gave so, it to Giannis and Chris. Chris had, Chris so you, and Giannis went home. 
couple like a day or two later, whatever, had Colin Quinn on their podcast, History Hyenas, and then he got COVID from that. So you almost killed. Quinn. I almost I almost killed Colin. Quinn. Could you imagine that if you fucking took out Quinn? Oh, yeah, it would have been good for your career. Mine. I mean, it's another white guy out of the way. Dude, I dude, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Colin Quinn is not in my way. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> that guy, he's fucking... That guy makes... I mean, the guy who made the fucking Constitution funny. Yeah. I don't, I don't get that shit. That's true. That's I don't true. I don't understand that yeah, shit. Yeah, he's a smart guy. Have you ever been in a thing like where you like you find it hard to... Now you got your hour out. Do you have another hour ready to go? No. It's it, tough. It's tough. Yeah. Now, luckily, there's one bit that I loved from back before I... I put it online in like 2019, maybe. And it did decently, but not great. And I'm like, oh, I could do that more... I can do that better now. Yeah. So that I'm I'm bringing back and that hits and I'm doing it as more as myself or as before I was kind of like performing with it. Yeah. I'm just kind of doing it sm- very similarly where hopefully I can grow it out. But like right now it's just the same bit but done as me as opposed to some comic yeah. trying to be a comic. Um, so that fills about four or five minutes. And then I have a few other minutes that I'm building. I'm probably at like, I can do 25. I don't know how great it is, but that, that probably takes 25. And then the other 20 I can do with crowd work. But then the idea is just keep adding to it and then, refining that 25 to sharp minutes and then it's it's uh you know but it's tough i'm yeah i'm fine very it, naked i'm finding it tough right now something i know i'm gonna break through it but it, people don't understand for me <laughs> it's tough dude it's I, I don't write jokes yeah i have to kind of go through it i have to have an experience and then bring it on stage i i can't sit there and you know you hear about this? Yeah. Bing, bing, boom, bang. Yeah. I yeah, can't. Yeah. I mean, I envy people who can do that. God yeah, bless God you. Bless. But I can't do it. I have to I have to really have passion. Dude, for you know it. Nathan McIntosh? Yeah. That guy can turn over material so fast it blows my mind. Yeah, Joe I List. Same thing. Joe, same thing. Yeah. Gail, uh, Sam Morell. Uh, Mark yeah. Norman. Yeah. They they just, you know, I, I respect that type of thing. I just don't have it. What I know? really love about Nate is he does it. He's so in touch with his feelings on everything. It's not even like... Hey, do you hear this story? He just knows his funny so well. You know, I was sitting with him at a diner years ago. I'll never forget. He just starts ranting for 10 minutes about how much he loves diners. Yeah. And I'm like, this could all go on stage right now. Yeah. Like, you just get it. So I envy that. I'm not that. I can just come out as humor. It's all coming out as stand-up. It's a weird thing, too. I think when you become human, Yeah. you know, when I go home, I'm just dad and yeah. fucking her husband. and Yeah. You know, we're, we're hanging out, being silly and stuff. Yeah. It's a hard, like, you know, I, I like my therapist, I'm like, dude, you made me human. Yeah. You know, there was a point where I wasn't, I was like stand up. Yeah. Stand up, stand up, being a stand up when you're in love with stand up and that's your life, the clubs, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden you, you make a connection to a family. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck, man. Mm-hmm. <sighs> like, I gotta, I gotta, I, like, I'm, you know, like we talked about before, it's like trying to figure out how to become. It's like I don't. It's hard to not be human. Yeah. Again, to just go be that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to turn that motherfucker to go from all right, dude. I'll see you later. Bye. See, you. I love you, dude. See you tomorrow. And then be like, let's fucking go do this. Yeah. You know. Yeah, as a dad, that might be tougher. It's like, a. It's as a, a husband, I'm like. I'm sick of this bitch anyway. Oh yeah. I mean, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm sick of my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love her. I'm so in love with her. I love my but wife. But it's a lot. Oh, she, I'm a fucking, I'm a paycheck to her. <laughs> I come home, where's the check? It's right there. Fucking go ahead, buy some meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I don't even get anything out of it either. Oh, my She's God. She's in bed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to turn up. I was talking about this on the bonfire. My therapist was like, yo, man, you know, you have to go make love. I was like, what? I'm like, bro, she's premenopause. <laughs> like, she gets hot flashes and becomes a, a real fucking demon. Like, I see it shot up her neck. And I don't know what he's like, go home and, you know, kiss her and tell her you love her and bring her to the bedroom and kiss her neck. And I go, listen to me, man. I brought out our books. I have, a, like, a, we share an Apple book account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, my books are like self-help, anger issues, manifestation books. It's all about tre- me trying to get better. Her books are uh, Rock Me, <laughs> Backstage Pass, A Vampire Fucking Her. Yeah. It's like she does, she's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's a dirty whore. 
I'm going to have to go home and... <laughs> I'm going to go after home and fucking slap her in the face and tell her she can't get in the bedroom unless she sucks my dick. That's you know? fun, though. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, it's fun, I and guess. And it's, uh, you know, you can get some of your frustration out there. Well, he goes, he goes well, go home and choke her. I'm like, well, fucking right, that's good advice. <laughs> actually, I actually, I went home. This is so fucked up. This is my life. I went home. I took a shower because yeah. I'm always paranoid that she's like some smell. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> like oh, she's going to be like, eh. And uh, I took a shower and I go, hey. Dawn, she's in the kitchen. I go, hey, Dawn, she, what? <laughs> Come here, what? I need you to help me with something. What do you need help with? I go, I need help. The towels are in. Uh, no, I need help with something. Uh, I heard just, uh, and she comes slowly walking in, and I'm sitting there with my towel, and I go, I need help. And she went, oh, God. <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then she blew me like she was making me breakfast. Like, oh God! You want a little breezy? Or oh not? my God, dude! Yeah, it's like, all right, you know, she's in a dirty t-shirt. <laughs> it's like, all right, a side tits hanging out. I'm like <laughs> trying to grab a tit. I mean, it's just like, oh, God. you know, she didn't want to have sex. She's just like, get this over with. She's yeah, blowing yeah. me like, I need to get this over yeah, with. Yeah, a thousand percent, dude. So but, you know, just fucking. Choker. Yeah, get a little frustration out right there. Maybe I'll hire those dancers to come over one night. Honestly, they're females, but you know. Maybe she's into that. Maybe she's into it. Yeah, maybe I would love it if my wife just turned lesbo. I think we should be able to get a pass. I think there should be a point where, you know, she's like, look, I'm not into it. I'm busy. You got kids. What I don't know don't hurt me. I've, I have my closer is about the idea of uh, basically I have to meet her emotional needs every day because yes. that's what she needs. She has to, if, and if I don't meet her emotional needs every day, I'm an asshole. If she doesn't meet my physical needs every day, I'm an asshole. Yep. There should be something. And I've thought this through many, and this is the bit I did. The idea of forming a, like cheating on my wife, there's an emotional connection that happens that is fucked up to her. I see how that hurts. Yeah. A hooker is just outsourcing. Yeah. I should be able to outsource. Yeah. You don't want to do this job. I can pay for it to be done. Yeah. What are we even doing? Yeah. Yeah. Let me pay a middle-aged age woman <laughs> to jerk me off and put a finger in my butt. Should a massage end any other way? No. Like, well, the idea that a massage doesn't end with a hand job is crazy. Dude. It's nuts to me <laughs> it's, ah. that you're so close to my butt and balls, <laughs> and then you the last thing is roll over, and um, I have a full-fledged bouncing heart on, and, and you don't touch go it. Home. Yes. What is what is the point even? What is just massage that? Get it clean in. It up. Yeah, I mean, get, I'm done. I'm, and I feel great. And you you get a nice tip. And if you're into that, yes. that, that you've entered this knowingly, that should be Yes. Deshaun Watson, the only thing was the girls didn't know the NFL player who was trying to get all these girls, they didn't know what they were getting into. But if there was a service <laughs> that he would like try to coerce them to do it, but if there was a service and that you that's what y'all do, that's that's how a massage should be. hundred percent. Crazy. I think that should be a viable. Um, hey, it should be the way. It you should, should say, "I don't want the hand job, please." This time, no. That should be the op the yeah. option. Should be not getting a hand. They job. should grab and go, huh? Yeah. And I'll go, no. Or I would never do that. Hundred percent. I'd be, yes, I do want that. <laughs> I miss them. I miss those massages. I miss the happy endings. I never did one. I missed out. You never did a massage, dude. My wife is the only girl I've ever had sex with. That's it. That's my that's my wife. That's it. It's the list. My wife. I was on the road. I went on the road. I was a comedian in New York City. Not that pussy was being thrown at me, but I, there was definitely some girls I could. And I was like, nah. Religious kid. Went home. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> the not blinking impressed me. <laughs> You've only had sex with my wife. With your wife. Me and Mark also on the pod. Only he had sex with your wife? Only had sex with his oh. wife. <laughs> oh, I, was gonna, I thought that was a Hindu yeah, thing. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you must fuck my wife. <laughs> no, never. Two of us, though, have only had sex with our wives. So That's four fucking that crazy. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you? 
39. When did you meet your wife? 31. What were you doing? Not fucking girls. We. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we. I, I, it was a good decision. It was a decision I made that in hindsight I might not make again. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you first have sex? 31, dude. You had sex at 31. 31. You've never ended a vagina until you were 31. 31. 31. Did you see a boob? Yeah. Did you get a hand job? Yeah. Did you get a blow job? No. What? Yeah. The only blow job you ever got was from one woman? Yeah. How do you know if it's good? It's pretty good. But how do you know? <sighs> you never great. had a, a rock and roll slut from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never had a middle aged woman who liked delivery. <laughs> <laughs> <You've>, <laughs> no. Never. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that fucking crazy? It's crazy. I didn't realize. I knew it was crazy, but it's crazy. I didn't. I knew it was crazy. It's, but she's I the same to, way, right? She's the same. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would suck if yeah, she was like, All right, my well. wife is very honest, so I know pretty much everything. She had. She told me that before I told her. So you guys are the first. Yeah. For Which both. Really, and that I I need her. I need to be her first because I'm very bad at sex. So I don't Hi, want her. She has nothing to compare. Buddy, to, your first God. time having. You guys had sex yeah. for the first time. How old was she? 30s? 22. Tw yeah, she's not no, you had to do the math on that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> she was 16 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> she was bad, but I know why. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she was 22. I had no excuse. Yeah, I met her at 22, so thank God for that. Buddy, that is incredible. Yeah. So you, you learned how to have sex with the woman you love. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Is, I'm sure emotionless sex would be so fun, but I truly don't even know what it's like to just have it's like good. sex. It's <laughs> good. I, I mean, bet, it's I bet, good. I bet it's pretty fun. Oh my god, it's yeah. good. I I imagine it's <laughs> fun. I imagine it gets old at a certain point, but that oh, as soon as you come, fun. you're like oh, with that. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you're done, you're like, all right, what do you want to do now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but wow, yeah. man. I've never met anybody. I've You're the first person I've met that only had sex with one woman. Yeah. And she's only had sex with you. Mm -hmm. So you've only been, how old are you now? 39. So you've only been having sex with one woman for eight. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eight years. I've been fucking. You've been fucking for eight years. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Is that like a, I mean. It's not common. No, did you do that? No. Max. No. <laughs> Even the autistic kids didn't do that. Yeah, I know. I know. It was that a fucking choice. goofy fuck over there. I, got, I forgot what he looks like already, but it was a conscious choice. He looks yeah. like a very ugly woman. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's epic, man. So you don't even know. I mean, look at man. That's, that's you, you rolled the dice. Yeah. What if it wasn't good? <sighs> to be honest, I wouldn't know. What if it was? What if it was weird looking? Oh, what if you went down there and it was like a? Well, we weren't married at the time, so I said I was gonna wait till I was married. Then when I wasn't married at thirty, I was like, well, I'm not waiting till I'm married. But I want at this point, it should be somebody I care about. Yeah, that seems special to me. Yeah, and then when I met her pretty quickly, it was like okay, so within like a month. But it was it was pretty clear that like this was a, a real thing. This is it. And we ended up getting married. Yeah, you wound up getting married and having. Did you have sex on the wedding night? On the wedding night, I no Indian mm. wedding. Oh, you can't do that. I'm not, not that you can't. You just, you're just exhausted. People were, people were at it. Yeah, you're fucking, you're fucking exhausted. exhausted. She fell asleep weddings. on the couch. Yeah. And then I stayed up talking to my homies at like six in the morning. But yeah, she was, been, yeah. You've been dancing. <laughs> you're yeah. fucking, you want to have sex? I don't. She was, they, I don't. I've been just dancing. Dude, she was asleep on the couch. And then at some point just went to, because we had like an after party, <laughs> which already the wedding ended at like 1 a.m. And then a bunch of friends came to our apartment. Yeah. She fell asleep on the couch, then went to the bed. And then my homie stayed. And we just talked to like six in the morning, and then I'm not waking her up at sunrise to have sex, dude. That I look at man, I that's that's wild to me. Yeah, I don't that think it's wild. I, I think it's I don't I don't know what to think of that. I've I never don't either. I've never met anybody who's did that. Yeah, I've never met anybody. Is that it was less uncommon in Texas, but nobody waited till 31. Everybody got married there earlier. Yeah, so I grew up with that not be. I it was. Definitely outside the norm, but it yeah. wasn't like insane. Then I moved to huh? Cali and here, and it's fucking mind blowing. It's mind thirty one is mind blowing regardless, but yeah. it just in general the idea was like none of us were trying to. People were having sex 13, 14, 15 yeah. as they could. It didn't matter. Dude, I mean, dude, I, like that's so weird. Like, I think I had sex for the first time I was twelve. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, wrong. Yeah, I mean, I was, was I was, nightmare. I was the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. 
So I mean, like the first was it unc- Like, did you know what to do? Did you I have had to- no clue? Wow. Yeah. So what did, did you read books? Did you talk to your dad? Did he this no. goes in here and no. put that in there, and then you pump your hips? I like- knew the basics. I also was pre med, so I knew enough anatomy <laughs> and physiology to do what I needed to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's not that hard. Right, well, uh, you know, you lift a hood. There it is. Oh, you know what I mean? oh, oh there's a hood. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? A hood. <laughs> you, have, you have to lift something. Yeah, that's wild. So yeah. you, I mean, th- like at the end of it, we were like, was that okay? Oh, were you like, was it, no, did it, did it? We knew immediately it was a disaster the first time. <laughs> we knew immediately. We knew immediately. You knew immediately, like, yeah. oh, I didn't do that yeah, right. I was good at everything, but then the actual sex, there was like fit issues. It was a whole thing. <laughs> it was what? It was like fit issues. There was, You know what I mean? It was a whole you, thing. Oh, you didn't fit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's her first time. Yeah, so. It was, so it's like, ow, 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 stop, Yeah, that's stop. not a testament to me as much as, much as it is her. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had sex with a virgin vagina. Mm. Damn it. <laughs> you missed out, dude. I missed out, and it's too late to go back. Now I get arrested. <laughs> 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 I mean, I can never. Oh, well, you can't go back for that. I mean, it's too bad the, unless that island opened up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You're not successful enough for that. I am not. You fuck face. <laughs> <laughs> not either. I was just trying to take a shot. That's all right. You took one. It's yeah, good. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sucks that I'm not. Ex- that's such a dig. You're not successful enough to fuck kids. <laughs> Isn't that the funniest? Isn't that the best thing you tell somebody? Uh, you, uh, you're not successful enough to fuck a child. What yeah, are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you don't have that much success. Yeah, you go to jail. <laughs> I go to jail, exactly. I'm a pervert. Yeah. Um. Wow, dude, that's so interesting. So d- did it get better with time? Yeah, we figured out each other. Y- you figured out yeah. the moves? Yeah. You figured out like the... Did you watch? Did you, did you watch any videos? No, I just kind of learned what was liked and what was not, and you know, you get you get a pretty good. Response did you, you don't watch bit. porn then either? Do you watch porn? No, no, no. I definitely. I, I'm not gonna say it hasn't happened, but I try not to. I try to, you know. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't. I believe in that. I mean, porn, you know, is a, you know, it's a, one of those things where it's like, fuck, man, it's like working at an Italian restaurant. It's like I don't care how good the food is. After a while, you're like fucking blech. <laughs> Yeah, blech. You want the uh, chicken bone of tuna? I'm good. Do you got a peanut butter sandwich anywhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like porn is the same shit where it's like, all right, whatever. I've seen it. Yeah, what are we You know, doing? you get to a certain point, you're like, yeah, you got to go way down into the depths of it. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, your wife's regular vagina doesn't, you know, if your clit doesn't look like a penis, if I can't suck <laughs> it. <laughs> Anyways, um... Well, that's wild, man. Good for you, man. That's that's good. That's a that's a, a healthy relationship. Oh, thank you, man. You know, Ryan. yeah, therapy, no. all that. We both grew up in like kind of shitty family situations, so we had a lot of work. To, so therapy's been big for us. And I'll say this: I was wondering, therapy. I I think has made me a much better comic. I don't know about you. Oh, I was worried that therapy. I mean, I, my first therapy session with the guy I go to, I was like, "Listen, dude, you're not making me into a fucking pussy." <laughs> and he was like, "You already are." Men don't go to therapy. <laughs> He goes, that's why you're you're a pussy. That's awesome. And I was like, I love you. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, therapy opened me up. I that's where I learned the one thing I, I think, you know, if I could if I could describe my comedy, I'm I'm vulnerable on Yeah, stage. that's what therapy helped me a lot with. I will I will I will let out I will tell a crowd of people which was the style of comedy I like, is that, you know, like Louis does that, where it's just complete vulnerability where yeah. you're gonna say stuff you probably shouldn't say yeah. to a crowd of people. Where they're probably, if you said it, you know, at work, you'd be fired. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. somehow you make it relatable where they get to go. I love when, like, you know, when you find out that the, you know, the, somebody famous takes a shit. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, you shit too. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I love that when people come up after and they're like, dude, I did that. He does yeah, that. Or yeah. she did. That makes me feel good that, you know, those people related to yeah. what I said. Maybe no, these no. young girl, these hot chicks are like, ew. You'll get there someday. Someday you'll come back and be like, oh, my God, that happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, therapy is great. I think therapy is great for me, too, because it's, you know, it's a place you can go and and, and uh, take the load off. Yeah. I, you can't tell your friends everything. No. You can't tell your wife everything. Definitely not. But you can tell your therapist that fucked up shit and it's gone. Yeah. And you can start fresh. Yeah. You can, you know, it's like getting caught cheating. Yeah. It sucks. 
But now you don't have to lie. Yeah. Now you can say, all right, I fucked up. I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. You know, you know, I got caught cheating in my life a long time ago where it's like, ah, uh, yeah, all right. Well, it's now it's gone. It's over. You, the, the cloud, the sky opens up and the sun shines through. And you can be like, all right, good. I didn't want to fuck, ugh, yeah. carry that around with you, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's um, the main thing about being faithful, I think, is not having to walk around with... Not to say, I, I, I feel like guys who say, I will never, or like my relationship, is, that's your, a cheater for sure. Yeah. So I never, I never say, I will never, but I think about like, if I went down that path, having to live that lie, sure. yeah. the guilt would f- consume me. Yeah. Oh, God. I just want my wife to say, you can cheat. That's the dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. Hey, man, I'm a little busy this week. I just don't want to know about it. Don't embarrass me. What I don't know, don't hurt me. Don't embarrass me, that's it. Yeah, don't embarrass me, and don't kiss her. <laughs> I'd rather see my wife sucking a guy's dick than holding his hand. <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, dude, your special's out right now. Gaslit. Gaslit. It's on YouTube and where else? YouTube and then maybe, what's it called? Punch.tv? Punchup.live. Punchup.live. But YouTube right now. You it's got tour dates. Well. Pots Down PA, the That's March 20th. Out. Um, April 11th through 13th, Tempe. We could use some sales Great there, club. to be honest with you. And then uh, April 18th through 20th, Denver. On the 20th, I'm going to do shows high. Obviously, 420 in Denver. You got it. Right. And then You can do LA mushrooms or weed? Weed, maybe we'll close it. But I, uh, I'm, I'm doing a big thing on the 22nd, so maybe we'll do shrooms after the 22nd. Make sure you go check him out, everybody. Fucking hilarious guy. One of the good guys in the business. I oh, mean, you, buddy. Like sex what? with one woman. Yeah. You can't get better than that. No, thank you. You're dude. a good human being. I'm not perfect at all, but I try to just be. I mean, even saying that yeah. is makes you <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> I mean, right? Hey, thanks, buddy. You, you're kicking it on the podcast. I love that you guys have people on. You're always promoting other people. You're always bringing people up. Of course. And you got your new special. I mean, if you can get past the first minute and a half <laughs> of that fucking silly shit. <laughs> Uh, it's fantastic oh, Hilarious guy uh, Robert Kelly live For all my dates Of course I'm going to be In Boston uh, Mothership sold out I think Let's go Maybe there's standby San Antonio Lafayette Club 337 Boston You better fucking show up man Get your tickets now At my uh, thing Make sure you uh, RobertKellyLive.com Go to punchup.live Watch my special Go to comicwearables.com You can get one of these Cool hats uh, Are up there right now Use code word Ladybugs to uh, make sure you uh, get the code. What do you guys got over there? Uh, Max Marcus Comedy, all social media, and I'll be with you in San Antonio. Uh, for all things Cheese Show, you just go to YouTube, type in Cheese Show, and then Danny had to get out of here, but you can follow him at Danny Braff. Danny Braff, and of course, Mush. What's Mush website? He's going to be with me with San Antonio. He's featuring me, Mike Suarez, so make sure you check us out there. Me and Max are going to be uh, out there together, kicking it, filming it, and having a good time. And, uh, of course, we're going to go to patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. And we're going to do questions with my man right now. Yes. And uh, so if you want to watch the questions, the second half of this, go to patreon.com, sign up, support the show. Uh, really appreciate it. It's fucking like five bucks. Don't even worry about it. And uh, and that's it. You guys are the best fans in the world. Thanks for watching again. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next week on You Know What, Dude? Listening to the YKWD podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.